and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining me today on episode four of the Idea Space podcast. I'm Jen Liddy, your host. And today I'm asking you to think what you would do if you got the following invitation. What if I told you that you'd won an all expense paid trip where you would get to luxuriate in the indulgences of an on site spa, a personal sommelier, and a four course dinner? I mean, that's a hell of an invitation, right? You would totally take me up on it because it would be a fantastic escape for you. It would be 100% indulgent and it would feel amazing. This month, I'm focusing on this idea of indulging with my coaching clients, especially as we head into the holiday season in America. Now, indulge is definitely a luxury word. Here's the definition. To spoil, pamper, pander, coddle, humor, or treat. In other words, it's to allow oneself to enjoy the pleasure of. And this word is fascinating to me because it has such a positive connotation. Enjoy the pleasure of, allow yourself to pamper, to coddle, to treat. But I want to talk about this word in a different way because I have another point to make about it. Personally, I'm in the middle of making a comeback from some poor health. I've gained about 40 pounds, I'm not sleeping well, and I'm struggling with some brain fog. I'm taking care of it with a functional medicine doctor, but it's got me thinking about how much of this is just from being a woman in my 40s and how much of this struggle is from my indulgences. So let me tell you some of the indulgences that I tend to indulge. I'll say something like, oh my God, I'm being totally indulgent today and having a hot fudge sundae. Now, this is something that I will typically do because I personally love ice cream and my family spends the summer out at the lake for the weekend. And what we do is we take the boat into town and the thing that we do is we have ice cream. It's like a thing that we do. But I will give myself a pass by saying, oh, I'm just going to totally indulge today. Or if you're going to an event, maybe you do something like this. Tonight, I'm indulging in a few cocktails. It's like you're giving yourself permission to drink more than you normally would. This is another way that I will indulge. If I really need a break from something, I'll say I'm going to indulge myself and binge watch an entire season of fill in the blank. And so we use this word indulge, which we mean I'm going to pamper myself. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to enjoy the pleasure of fill in the blank, whatever it is for you. But I want to make an argument about what's on the other side of that action. For me and for my clients, on the other side of indulging is some really bad, harmful stuff. And I don't just mean weight gain or a hangover. I mean self-loathing, disgust, or despair, Often it leads to regret, which is a totally different kind of a hangover than indulging in a few cocktails will give you. So some more examples of indulgences are like beyond food. You know, they could be perhaps you indulge in staying up too late. I personally indulge in this because my kid goes to bed so late that I don't get any time to myself unless I stay up far too late and then indulge in staying up too late. Another indulgence might be spending too much money on something that you know you either don't have the money for or don't want to spend it on, but you do, you indulge yourself in that. Uh, Perhaps going on a vacation that you know you can't afford either time or money wise. And probably one of the biggest indulgences I see my clients suffering with is wasting time on social media. They'll They'll say it feels like an indulgence to them, but we have to really examine what's on the other side of it. 
Why are they indulgences? Well, we get excited about them before we do them. And we also get excited about them often while we're doing them, but it's the afterward feeling of regret or self-disappointment that most of us struggle with. So the other thing that you need to know is it doesn't just happen with food or drink or shopping, for example. We can indulge in thoughts. Certain thoughts might feel good in the moment, but then they bring us the regret hangover on the other side. For me, those are judgmental thoughts, uh, perfectionistic thoughts, and comparison thoughts. Sometimes I'll compare myself to myself, and sometimes I'll compare myself to others. Sometimes I judge myself, sometimes I judge others. But regardless, any of those thoughts are indulgent to me. Other thoughts that cause me to indulge are that game that I like to play of where do I rank and am I smart enough to do this? I play that game, and it's an indulgent game in my head because it brings me right into a comparison place that doesn't really serve me. I can also indulge in feelings of worry and anxiety, and I wonder if you do this too. I want you to know that these are the worst because they make my body feel like I'm a train that can't get out of the station. When I indulge in worry and anxiety, which means I'm looking ahead to something I can't control and I let my thoughts kind of just go down a rabbit hole, my body starts to feel like a train that is revving and revving and revving with nowhere to go. It's like I have no control and I can't do anything about it, but I indulge in worry and anxiety, but it doesn't get me anywhere. So obviously, these are lots of great examples of ways that I indulge, and maybe there's ways that you indulge that are similar to mine, but there's tons of ways that we can indulge on a daily basis, right? So here's the argument I'm trying to make. I consider these thoughts, feelings, and actions indulgent in that I allow myself to go down a rabbit hole. I tell myself, and this is the difference I want you to understand, I tell myself that this is going to feel pleasurable, that it's going to feel good to have that gossip session, or it's going to feel good to have that second or third cosmopolitan. But really what it does is just brings me down a rabbit hole, and I get lost down there, flogging myself, wondering why I did it, and most importantly to me and to my clients, because this is what they hire me for, not being productive in general. I generally don't like myself or my choice after I've indulged in something, and man, there is nothing pleasurable about that feeling. So it's ironic that the idea of indulging is to experience pleasure, which we wind up not feeling pleasure. So here's the real test of when I consider something indulgent. If I make the choice that feels good in the moment, but long term it keeps me stuck, which means I'm longing to achieve my goals, that's indulgence. And it for sure gives me a regret hangover. I'm wondering, do you indulge in something that doesn't serve you? Over the next week, begin to notice. Now, it might be hard because this thing usually feels really good in the moment. It feels really good actually right before you do it. But on the other side of it is that, oh, feeling. The no bueno feeling. The how did I get here again feeling. You're likely to judge yourself when you get there. And what I am asking you to do is to get fascinated with how you do this instead of getting critical with yourself. Ask yourself if you could be better served by not indulging. Now, yeah, I know it's easy to say this, but it's hard to do. It requires you to check in and avoid the mindless indulgences that we all engage in. Now, at some point, you might decide to indulge. You might very proactively, with a lot of thought, decide I'm going to indulge in X, Y, or Z. And if that's if you do that, then that's fine, of course. Don't judge yourself. You just have to like your reasons for doing it. And I have a hard question for you. Do you even have a reason for doing it? These are all really good questions to ask yourself. And my job today is to make you aware of it and help you ask those questions. Here's an example from my life. My son Jack is 11, and this has been true of him ever since I've known him. His Halloween candy lasts him through January. I know that it's ridiculous, but he's just not a big candy guy. 
What I usually do because he doesn't care is I usually steal his Reese's peanut butter cups. Those are my drug of choice. And this year I made a decision to not indulge in that yearly tradition. Part of it is that I'm off sugar for an autoimmune eating protocol. And I'll tell you about that at another time, but it's super boring, but mostly I'm completely off sugar. And I've been thinking about how I normally behave as we all descend into the holiday season. You know, we indulge in thinking that this time of year, we deserve to indulge. We indulge in thinking that we deserve to indulge. I want you to think about that. Where do you indulge in thinking that you deserve this indulgence? Because all we're really doing is bullshitting ourselves. Here's how it normally goes for me. I tell myself I deserve some freaking time off from the rigidity and protocol that I normally follow. Maybe you do this too. And the holidays are a great excuse to indulge and pamper ourselves. Also, let's not forget that probably everyone around us has the same story. We're all indulging. We're all looking for an excuse to get off the wagon for a little while. But is it pampering us? Is it taking us forward? Is it caring for us? The big question that I want you to ask is, how does this thing actually take care of me? How does it actually nurture me? And this is the big aha that I came to recently. Indulging and nurturing seem like they're very, very similar. Both feel like they're taking care of you. But I've discovered that indulging and nurturing are two opposite ideas. One moves me away from what I want, and the other moves me toward what I want. Do you know which is which in your own brain? This year, I want to come out on the other side of 2018 heading toward my goals, not having to start over again in January. Do you do that to yourself? Do you think, oh, I'll just put these next two months on hold and I will start over again in January? Why would you make your life that much harder? So if you want to come along with me and spend the next two months really heading toward your goals, let's talk about how you can do this if you want to. There are three steps that will get you out of the mindless indulgences that keep you away from your goals and help you head toward the mindful nurturing that will help you achieve your goals. The number one thing is you have to get aware. And this is really hard for some people because it requires them to see what's going on. It requires them in the moment to be like, oh, here I am doing that thing again. So the number one question I have for step one, get aware, is to ask yourself, Where do you indulge? I've given you lots of examples here. But in my earlier days, it was different. It wasn't food. It was shopping, drinking, partying. Now it's food. So what is the thing that you indulge in? What moves you away from your goals? Step two, get real. Again, this is hard work. And the question to ask yourself here is, does the indulgence really serve you? Now, only you can decide this or admit it, if that's the case, whether this indulgence moves you closer to what you want or it moves you away from it. And I'm going to tell you, your brain's going to want to BS you here so much. Your brain's going to want to lie to you and say, no, 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 you need that. It's soothing for you. But on the other side of it, do you have a regret hangover? And this is the question you need to ask. Does this indulgence serve me? And only you can be honest about that. Nobody else can do that work for you. And if you think it does serve you, you have to answer the question, how does it serve me and why does it serve me? And that's going to take you being alone with your thoughts, maybe writing or maybe on a run or a walk doing some meditative thinking about that question. Step three, get moving. Now is the time to take baby steps forward. But here's what your brain's going to want to do. Your brain's going to want to say, I will never, ever have another drink again. I will never, ever overspend again. I will never, ever spend another hour on social media. And that is completely unrealistic. Stop trying to overhaul your life and start taking baby steps. If you think too much about trying to make a 180 in your life, you're going to be paralyzed. So here's what you do instead to get moving. Focus on just the next meal just the next hour, just the next choice. If you try to do too much, I promise you, you're going to fall prey to thoughts like this. I'm just going to wait till after the holidays. 
No. Why make your life harder and then restart again? Because you know you've already restarted before. Another thought that you'll fall prey to if you try to do a 180 degree switch is, uh, it's good enough the way it is because it seems really hard to make a 180 degree change. So P.S., It is not good enough the way it is. And you know that deep down, you know you need to make a change, but you don't have to do a 180 degree change. Here's another thing if you try to do too much. You're going to go back to the old pattern and you're going to say, oh, this will just make me feel better. I'll just buy this thing and it will make me feel better. It might make you feel better for 15 minutes or an hour or until the bill comes in. But that's when regret will settle in. And ultimately, that doesn't move you toward your goals. Do you indulge in something that feels good right now, but doesn't serve you later? Maybe your indulgence is self-pity. Maybe it's not an action like shopping. Maybe it's a, it's a thought like I need to be better than everybody or I need to please people. Maybe you're indulging in confusion or anger. Maybe you're indulging in resentment. And the big question I have for you that I'm going to leave you with is, do you deserve that? Does it nurture you? Does it move you toward your goals? And I want you to know, you don't have to justify that to anyone else but yourself. You don't have to justify it to me or your mom or your sister or your best friend. Only you can know whether you deserve to indulge in the thing that you are indulging in. You do have to like your answer though. Do you like your answer? When you ask yourself, do I deserve to indulge in that? Do you like your answer? Now, I know this work is uncomfortable and it's hard, and maybe you need some support around this, especially if this is a pattern that's been in place for years. My group coaching clients are examining exactly how indulgences keep them from achieving the goals they've set, and it is hard work, but I want to tell you about an amazing thing that a client told me literally just last night. She said, I've had a big shift this week. I was struggling so much trying to have a clear vision. I could not see where I wanted to go. Three weeks ago, I used Jen's monthly workshop and worked with the tool she taught us. Then I started to understand that certain things felt wrong and I didn't want to feel like that anymore. Within three weeks, some shifts happened. I started to understand the situation I was in and found ways to drive it better. The perspective has totally changed. It's crazy. And I want you to know it's not crazy. It's just that when you have the right tools and you have somebody to help guide you and you can stop judging yourself about it, then you learn how to be your own damn hero. So I hope that this idea of indulging versus nurturing is helpful to you. I want you to be humming along toward your goals. So if you're interested in joining the idea space, that's what we're doing there. We are totally humming along, working toward our goals, using the tools, learning how to not judge ourselves, becoming aware, et cetera, et cetera. If you're interested in the idea space, the the coaching group, come on over to www.genlitty.com. You can learn all about it there. But while you're there, nab the freebie, how to create more time. I promise you it will be especially useful to you during this holiday season. But let's be real. Couldn't we all use more time no matter what time of year it is? I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to connecting with you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. Or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.